the whole feeling of being illegal, being on Crown Land and not, and not uh, you, you, that's something we had to deal with, whether or not we were going to get eviction notice or whatever. And, and that kind of st stayed with me for a few years, and then, then I got over that, and then, and as, as I got over that, then I become more, I become more home, because, you know, I got more attached to the place. Now, and, you know, now this is it for me, probably. Uh, my name is Vince McIntyre. I'm um, 67 years old. I found this place by accident and decided to camp here with my girlfriend in 1979. She was a mountaineer, and we uh, made our temporary camp here. And here, 30 years later, we're still here. You have to adapt uh, rather than try and adapt the world to you, you have to get adapt to the situation. I have this thing for traditional ways, not just to say, well, that's the old way, you know. I mean, to me, that's often the good way. I find that hauling water in a bucket is much easier than fixing plumbing, especially when you live in a place where you don't have an infrastructure like power and so on. You know, I have a stream close by that I've I carry water from and uh, sometimes I pump water into a tank so I, I do have gravity feed in the summer. We have an outhouse hole uh, at um, a friend of mine uh, dug about uh, 10 years ago that was about seven or eight feet deep. I have a, a, s a small solar panel and a storage battery and then I have this electric fence that will keep the bears out of the camp and the house and so on. We um, usually shop at our field for, for the produce and we have a simple, very simple diet and mostly it's our own uh, and we have cows that we milk when we need milk. I usually get up around between 5 and 5.30 and I, uh, I make some breakfast and I, you know, I go down to, to my fields. I, first of all, in the winter time I go and feed my cattle and my horses and then, uh, and then I'll start my day working, you know, plowing or cultivating or uh, weeding or, you know, finding my crew and getting them together to go out in the field. Uh, there's never enough time. Yeah. I worked in mines and uh, logging and all that and it's brutal hard work, you know, and I, I can go and work in the field and it actually makes me feel stronger. When you're on the land and you're farming, your life is full and it's almost too full. So you're, you end up doing stuff that you have to do. Not by somebody telling you what to do, but the elements or uh, the, uh, you know, how things are growing in the field or all this. This is what directs you. It's not some uh, power tripper in your life that you call the boss, eh? You might think that I spend a lot of time on my own, but I don't, eh? Most of my connection with people is to the stuff I do. Probably another reason why I am I'm not fond of machinery and tractors and so on because it cuts out your communication with people. Right? The more mechanical advantages you get, the less need you have to communicate with people. So it, it, it dehumanizes the, the whole thing. And I think that's what's wrong with, one of the things that's wrong with uh, industrial agriculture is it, it's a lonely life. Uh, you have all the machinery you need to do everything. When, uh, when I uh, decided to, uh, to make a living farming, I, had, I, uh, I have to go back to my childhood and how I started. Uh, and uh, I, I come from the west of Ireland, and my first experience when I come to Canada was the, uh, I got to be the tractor driver, and that was kind of a traumatic experience because the owner of the farm looked at me and figured I was a little bit too light to pitch bales, so he said, well, you can drive the tractor. But I'd never been near a tractor before. So, uh, and then he looked at me because when I hesitated, and he says, well, if you don't want to do it, you can go home. And then when, uh, when I went to another farm that was more industrialized, and I did a lot of tractor driving, I found it quite lonely. And, and, uh, and when, uh, when I come to farm myself, I like horses, I, and, uh, and you know I like I, li I like the idea of uh, horse farming, and the, the clean way to do it, and it also takes a lot of skill. And I decided that's the way I was going to do it. 
if you're totally going and in the zone of warrior mode or whatever, you're living a lie, eh? Like you're not, not just existing, you know, as opposed to just being. To me, it, the biggest tragedy is that there's people today with, that they don't know why they're alive. They don't know why they're on this earth. Is it to play computer games or what? Uh, is it for kids uh, to get really good at mountain bike riding or something? Uh, like that, that's uh, unnecessary, that they don't have responsibility here. I think that's the biggest human tragedy in a sense, because it leaves people helpless, that it's all about fun. This isn't something that you might play at, you know, because I don't play at it, you know. I got run over with my horses and smashed up and I got up and I kept doing it, yeah. So it's, uh, to me, life is do or die, and then, then you're living.